Justin Lee is going to be coming back from injury. So really, we've got you know the four starters back, and there's some good young players in there. Christian Metz played a little bit last year. Um, Avery Duncan's the kid that we redshirted last year at St. Bernard's that we're expecting big things out of. So uh, we're just uh, we, and Bo Wakefield played a lot last year also. So like I said, we just have so many guys coming back there that. Matt Gandrew, another one looking down at the depth chart. So it just was an area that we didn't need a lot of guys. Which group then uh, would you say that you're most happy with as a group? Uh, if it's not maybe the wide receivers, uh, is it the D linemen or the, the tight ends or what have you? Or, or is there a group on there that you feel really good about as a group? I'm really excited about the D linemen. I, I just think they're all guys that have a chance to be you know, our kind of players, which have maybe been a little undersized D linemen. They've been very athletic, uh, really play with the high motor. I keep using that term. And those have been our kind of players. And these guys, I think, have a, a good opportunity that way. The linebackers, I love too. I love Brian Becker. He's a kid that's just going to be very, very big. And maybe someday he could go down. Right now, we'll leave him up. And you wait and watch him run around. Kyle's a heck of a player. And David Ackerman, he played at Blaine, a heck of a football program. So we already talked about F. So, Maybe those guys on defense, which you know we need to reload a little bit more there, where we've got really a lot of the offensive guys back for two more years. So I'm excited about those guys. The kids uh, on the secondary can really run too. Um, the linemen we're going to have to be a little bit more patient with. They've got two years to develop. Stephen Battle's been a uh, running back for North Dakota. He played in, uh, against Grand Valley in playoff games for North Dakota. He was there and they won their national championship, I want to say three years ago or so. So he's been in big games and they say uh, he's a fantastic special teams player. And uh, we like I said, we just worked very deep last year, hoping Brandon Miles can come back and uh, was going to be our starting tailback last year. And then obviously Cropland came along and did a good job. But we need a little bit more depth there. So I think Stephen will be a good addition for us. So those are probably some of the reasons why we did what we did and tried to fill in those spots. Who do you think uh, on the list is, is going to step in and make an impact right away? Well, I, I don't know really if any of the receivers, linemen will play right away. Really on offense, the only one that I can see playing right away might be Stephen Battle. I think we have the ability to redshirt most of the other guys on offense. On defense, we're as good as we are at the DN spot. We're not very, depth, or not very deep with our depth. And uh, I don't know if any of those guys, size-wise, and that will be ready to play. <coughs> excuse me, ready to play next year. But uh, I think they're still a year away, and I think that's what we'll have to do. So I don't know if there's anybody in the D line that will be ready to go. Um, some of those linebackers would have the ability to play right away, but there's a lot of learning at backer, let alone the ability, a lot of uh, responsibilities between the run and the coverage and everything. So we're hoping that, quite honestly, we can redshirt most of these guys this year. I think we'd have that ability to do it, but the one that comes to mind playing the most right away would be Stephen Battle. You, uh, I'm sorry. Do you ever have do you ever have uh, hold ups in terms of you know we don't want to get redshirted when you're doing a home visit? Does that become a deciding factor sometimes with some kids? Sometimes, you know, it seems. I would say more the more the norm is that kids want to. You know, they feel like they could be a better player the fifth year. I have a little different philosophy when we do a home visit. Some schools will tell kids right in the home visit, you're an automatic red shirt, you're not going to play. I always tell them, we're going to have you go through two a days, train like you're a starter, and then we're going to evaluate it at the end of two a days. You know, maybe a starter pulls a hamstring, and maybe the recruit is even better than you thought, and that kid can help you right away. I know it's a, a weird comparison, but you know, Percy Harvin's a rookie, you can start in pro football right away. We can find a freshman receiver that can start right away too. It's the same correlation. And the uh, same thing with the lineman, the Vikings right tackle. Starts as a, uh, a true rookie in the NFL. Why can't you do it in college if you're ready? If you're not, you can help us out down the road and we have the ability to redshirt them. Sure, there's a chance for a better player in the fifth year, but we don't automatically do it. And uh, we want them to train all summer long like they're gonna be a player for us. And then we decide at the end of two a day. A little different from some people. So is this like a, a, a fairly rare year where you have like the least amount, maybe in the past 10 of immediate need? Yeah, I mean, it's a nice problem to have. 
and obviously you got to look ahead and I think we really did that with the old line most of those kids will still be around for two years so we have the ability to take a kid like an Aaron Bartholomew who's 6'6 six, six and 254 in reality he's a little light right now but put 20 pounds on him for two years and all of a sudden he's you know nearing 300 pounds and he's a kid that ran about five flat and he was a tight end for a while you know you take that kind of kid Dylan Peterson who's 6'7 to 80 or 90 and you get him a little time in the weight room I mean, it's it's the way you should do it you don't want to have to play those guys right away in the line same thing with the D, D lineman Frankie's the Jensen's those guys are all kind of 6'3 215 ish area uh, Nate Adams is a little bit bigger Wayne Pauls has already probably has the most size of all of them but again they don't have to play for a year so they're going to be that much bigger that much better so it's it is, uh, we do have the luxury of waiting with some of these guys a little bit more and uh, being a little bit more patient with them than maybe we've had in, uh, a couple of years ago. We had to play all those young kids, uh, these kids here, and we didn't didn't have a very successful year. You know, we had to play them too young. So in, in a perfect world, you'd like to start to get guys to replace your juniors, you know. They're gonna be juniors, seniors, you redshirt them. Maybe they're back up for a year, their sophomore year, they're playing. That would probably be the ideal way. Start for three years then. With a guy like Battle, um, how is he going to complement the running game? Is he going to complement Cropland? I mean, how, how do you envision using this guy? You know, I, I haven't seen him play a whole lot. You know, I'm kind of going on the word of the North Dakota guys. They say he's a little bit like Cropland, kind of a slasher and a real downhill runner, a power runner. He's not a, maybe not a spread offense, one back, make a lot of guys miss. He's just a positive get up field and get a lot as many yards as you can. I think he has some great speed. They said he's probably their number one. If they could have kept him, which they couldn't have because of the eligibility rules, he's probably their best special team player too they had on the team. So uh, he's more of a power runner is the way I would describe him from what I've seen and heard. As a special teamer, is he a punt returner, kick returner, or just a, a guy out there tackling? More of uh, the guy chasing guys down on punts and blocker on the kickoff return teams that type of thing he's not he's not the uh the alex lep only got one i can only please my wife one time there so he's going to be more of a just a player's roles on those teams think you guys next year have a chance to replicate what you did last year i think so uh, you know obviously the ball's got to bounce right for you and you got to stay healthy and we're probably never the deepest team you know that we uh, in the league, but you know a lot of experience. Uh, you know, been in big games, overtime games, close games that we did lose. So, you know, we have a chance to go play good football again next year without a doubt. I see Dylan Peterson on here uh, from Pierce High School. Can you talk a little bit about him? He's the only guy that I've ever seen get a strike bowling backwards. <laughs> we had a number of guys <laughs> that uh, went out bowling the weekend that Dylan was here. All of a sudden I look and here's this six, seven, three hundred pound guy bowling backwards with the ball between his legs and I looked and he hit a strike. I'm like, I gotta get that guy, he's pretty athletic. <laughs> Just a fun outdoor, if there's such a thing as a perfect fit for the Bemidji area, you know, that would take advantage of all the different things that you know you can do recreational wise around here. It's Dylan, just a fun loving big kid and uh, he can move. I was actually watching a different player on a film, a wide receiver and caught a pass and started running up the sideline. All of a sudden, here's this big guy chasing him. I'm like, who the heck and where's he from? And it was Dylan. So he's a big kid that can really, really uh, run, and that's probably the highlight of him. Yeah, you wish you had time to tell a recruiting story on each one of these, and believe me, there is probably something to be said about each kid, but you run out of time. We'll get to those, Brian, right at the round round show. <laughs> that works. Anything else? All right, well thank you. Thanks coach. Thank you.